Welcome to TradeTheNBI.com. This is John. This report is for the 28th. And Friday went, uh, well, pretty darn well. Um, <laughs> I know that's interesting to say, considering there was so much uh, downside movement. But uh, it was well within the expectation that we had and what we were looking for. So uh, not a shock to us. Uh, I know some people may have been a surprise as I scroll through the readings right here from the DOC. Deal Mega and for the Dow. A lot of conversion from all that wonderful green to all these new cells and um, just a shift. Nothing more. Some of the stuff had already begun to roll over in a few areas, and this was just to follow through. We had looked at it on a lot of our alert stocks. Um, had very negative signals over the last couple of days, even though some of their prices had been going up, and it was just a matter of um, waiting for that final transition to uh, take effect. And there we go. So let's move on to the chart. So what we began to see was the breakdown with the um, cyan moving above the green. We'd also seen the red uh, cross below the white. So we also had the steel dipping below. Um, cyan. So everything was indicating now whether it could be a day or two. Fine. We also had the precursor of warning that they were selling into this rise here with our deep uh, red setup and that our expectation was we were looking for at least a 50% move of the um, uptrend. Let's go ahead and enlarge this uh, screen. We'll go ahead and put a Fibonacci on there. All right, I've expanded it here and makes it easy to run our little retrace and all we're really concerned with this one is uh, the 50% number here roughly because that's where the institutions are going to be interested and whether or not they dip below or pivot from there um, is usually you know of course this will be distracting to some because it's like well if we flip this around um, no you didn't stop at the 23% you came down but oh it supported at the 38 even though it really wasn't quite at the 38 you know you get all that kind of stuff but we're generally looking right around that 1842 uh, level to come back a little bit within um, the general stroke. And you'll also notice that, um, and I'm not making this up, I didn't do anything related to it. You'll notice my dark red appears where? Yeah, right at that 50% number. So take that for what it's worth, uh, quite a bit actually, and <laughs> something worth noting. So we'll go from there on our uh, continuation readings. Um, NASDAQ, again, this one had been far more negative with that spread. Um, it will really convert to a deeper version of it if that uh, steel gets below uh, the cyan. Uh, but it's already begun. It was already ahead of the game uh, as far as where uh, price was at. YM, likewise, um, Dip below the red line here um, on the extreme, you notice that on the SP, including the bifractal here, um, probably going to suffer a little bit more uh, downside before that one uh, turns up. But um, all in all, very consistent with uh, our expectations. So I don't have anything to add, nothing concerning about anything that we're seeing. Uh, the precursors of it, you know, and some people want to talk to me about currencies leading uh, where things go, and I, I just don't buy it. The central banks, uh, they're so into playing with each other as far as combating who's who. Uh, we see a better relationship between market behavior and commodities than we will with uh, currencies. Um, I've been saying that for years, but uh, a lot of people have their, you know, I, I almost refer to them as religions about some of these things. Um, we look at it as a just a confirmation to where we were seeing selling from the setup before the market. Commodities started to fall even before the market did, and that was the warning. We also saw the turnaround signal uh, for gold in that, where we ended up with our uh, little pop signal right there. The improvement in the extremes finally came the next day, and our pivot up. So that's the real visual. Um, you know, you can hold on to whatever else you want. We're just looking at real data and real numbers as they're coming through. Likewise, we saw X was in the negative red. We were expecting the mini pop was going to fail, and sure enough, the pop failed. Just that straightforward and direct CLF. We didn't like it because, again, in that deep red showing it, um, 
even though we had the little pop-up. This is why adding that section into the algorithm is just even that much more clarity it brings to our overall situation. Um, AIG, we liked with its uh, nice up move all the way back down from the 49 range. Um, ugly pivot, uh, you still have the red, uh, I mean, cyan below red white, so it's still positive. It just got overbought. So what were we expecting with the positive extreme? Oh yeah, that's right, the low retrace. What do we get? The low retrace. Still turn around, set up for it. Nice buy opportunity on the discount. That's the easiest way to look at those kinds of setups. Black Lights WLT, we talked about it even after the decay. I had suggested every time you got back towards the 8, you would want to cover your puts and sell new calls. Sure enough, it put in its uh, sell configuration right over here when it crossed over. It gave you the perfect opportunity to sell those calls. And boom, dipped down. So look for the turnaround when it happens, and we'll be able to see it as well. And we can sit there and do this like we do with all the other stocks as well. We've been doing it with JCPenney, put in its sell signal. Now getting into an oversold. Not that far of a decline overall. Um, we were looking for somewhere a little bit further down, um, right around this uh, 760 range. So it actually performed pretty decent. Doesn't mean it still isn't going to come down to that in the next one because we still don't have a buy. And in fact, you're forming a little deeper red right there. So we'll wait and see. And this corresponds to what we were also witnessing here on the 50K. We saw this buy, I said, no, this is not something you want to buy. Look at all that deep red that was developing in there. This was not set up to be involved in. But if you were concerned about that, putting a buy stop above it, fine, not a big deal. But avoiding this complete trade, perfect setup. Um, even with this buy, we're likely to see a little bit of a decline back into it, um, which is fine. It's just going to give us the proper entry, and we'll be able to take advantage of it from there. Let's go look at it. Okay, flipping over to the 5K, we can see that we were ending from that sell signal that we ended up uh, with the previous day, continued all the way down. Um, turned a little color there, but there was nothing about that that was uh, significantly a buy. Um, it's interesting because we look at my secondary um, algorithm that I've been working on uh, the most recent version. This is what it would go from that deep red and uh, literally stayed red the entire day, no transfer at all until the very last bar. So it's a little interesting in the um, language pursuits. It still provides you with the pops as they came, but clearly we could see that as these pops were coming, look at what they're coming on. The cyan rising and clearly, and then boom, as soon as that uh, steel comes down, there's your hammer, and boom. Uh, not to mention you had lower peaks. That helps as well. Uh, likewise, we had the uh, transition over here. A little bit subtle. It's when it gives that nice little pop right up to the zero point right there. Um, it's where I look to short um, again after having taken the big decline. Added in significantly there, looking for the retrace. And, of course, what did it do? Retraced right back down, took out the low from the deep red. Not a shock there. Likewise, same setup is taking place at this particular point. Um, a little pop-up going right there. And um, interesting now because we've got the steel came below back up again. Um, and we're right at the crossroads. So kind of uh, negated that a little bit there. We got the little retrace. Um, I took it as an opportunity um, once a transition to go uh, take the green trade um, off the dip, uh, looking for a little bit of a pop, and when we get up to the next peak in sell signal, certainly we'll be taking advantage of that one. Um, it's just fun. That's it. No other real way to describe it. Uh, we can go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the alert stocks because uh, a few of those signals did pretty good too. Let's do that. Okay, so the Apple signal off of its uh, transition cross to a full buy uh, within that setup. Um, Sign of moving lower, sure enough, it continued its move. I will flip over to Amazon, which was interesting because we had seen the broadening sell signal as the decay was taking place right in there. And boy, you know, in fact, that did exactly what it's supposed to. Google, um, I think we had Google was still in the cell, yeah, no change. You can see that spread. I mean, if I get my little 
I can go ahead and do it here. Grab my rectangle and click it. There it is. Beautiful little rectangle fits right inside there, showing the separation between these two forces, which indicate to you that, uh, in fact, <laughs> you're not going to have an improvement um, just yet. Netflix, you know, we thought that we were going to be looking at some decent. We had the retrace there. It had the cyan move back above, unfortunately, after that positive extreme retrace, which you know, wasn't particularly fun. And sure enough, it sold off from that. So, you know, that's one of those where it wasn't horrible, but certainly went flipped back to a sell signal. Perfect spider and uh, got ugly. Speaking of ugly, uh, let's take a look at PCLN. Um, couldn't get any benefit. It had that sell cross over here with the steel dipping below. Right there was the confirmation of it. We had the red go below, the green bow below. There was no buy set up within this. And uh, it punished those who don't pay attention. Um, and it's not just paying attention. you got to have the right indications to let you know. And um, it doesn't get any clearer than that. Tesla had been in the cell from a daily standpoint. I warned anytime you got pops on your daily that you want to take advantage of uh, uh, cell signals. And it started to come back to an even point right here that was um, a potential for it to move, but it could not get over it. And science stays above um, on that. Though we'll have to watch it here because this potentially could produce um, a little roll around, and uh, that would be a positive one. So that one on your radar for potential um, to the upside. Twitter, yeah, that broke away the other day and continued um, in ugly fashion. I mean, that's just, like, I have to come up with a name for that because it's just like that beautiful open fish mouth. It's like a little serpent together and then boom, it just opened, or a snake. There we go, it's like a snake metaphor. Or it's just the two lines opposing each other, letting you know that the bears have uh, won out <laughs> in a simpler fashion. Baidu, you know, um, yeah, just kind of a sideways chart for the most part on this one. Um, we had the little pivot up there, held up pretty decent given the fact that it was generally in a sub. But that was a deep move down on the uh, science and potential for this to. Uh, Turn around to a nice buy. It's pretty good. Um, but it's just kind of sideways action with it. Looking at the FAS, just like the market, turned its separation, started to grow the other day, and fulfilled just exactly what we were expecting. Also, we had noticed the deep red even coming off the buy was going to give us a nice retrace. Voila. And lastly, on the little list here, Facebook. Um, yeah, it was in the cell. And these are all were well, they were all identical. And I mean, with give or take a couple of little variations, but all within the same cell signal crossovers. All having the cyan well above, and then the ones that had the cyan above the zero really took it on the chin hard and uh, resulted in the the biggest decline. So, all in all, if you paid attention to anything that we've been going over, you had a spectacular week. Um, <laughs> without any doubt. Um, that also points out that the month's going to end um, midweek, so I will make sure that um, before the weekend's out that I have uh, indicators available uh, for the following month. And uh, for those of you who've enjoyed uh, the Skype chat as um, non-indicator subscribers, um, more likely than not that's going to be changing just for those with uh, indicators because uh, we're really going to get into some more advanced um, teachings on that and it's really going to be necessary for uh, you to have the indicators in front of you to be able to follow some of the stuff that we're going to be going through and that will just keep it a little bit more orderly um, but the private Twitter feed I will still be on there posting and uh, giving great information as always though continue to trade well we'll talk again uh, next week